welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today, finally, we are discussing our top 10 games, sorry, top 10 war games from 2018. Um, and today is March 22nd. <laughs> March 22nd, 2019. Yeah. So, well, we, we had several that we had to play. Yes. I yes. think over the last two and a half months, we've played probably, what, five, maybe? Yeah, there were some very exciting mm -hmm. games that came out very late to yeah. this. And, and there's a lot of caveats to this list. We didn't play every single war game that came out. So this is the we played about 35 games, I think we figured out, right? Between the two of us. Yeah. Some of them I didn't play. You did some solos that I didn't do. You, I did some yeah. solos you didn't do. And there's a billion other games that yeah. came out. We just you can't get to that many, right? We, we can't possibly play the hundreds of games that no. come out. There's no way. No. There's no way. So these, this is our kind of top 10 games that we actually played Play. and got through. Um, so... So, so take it for what it's worth. Yes, I'm sure there'll this be a ton of games that you guys like, yes. which we didn't get to. So hey. let us know what those are in the comments. Why didn't you idiots play this game? Yes. Go and ahead and Let say. us know what your favorite yeah. games of 2018 were. So he won't be offended. No. So that we, you will be. I, I won't be. be. That way we can look at more games to play because there's never enough games. Yeah. So. I don't even know if those words go together and form a no. coherent sentence. No. We're all we're all addicts. It is what it yeah, is. There's never enough. Oh, a bow new new bulge game came out. Oh, I hate oh let's games. get it. Still barring it. Yeah, we're getting it. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know how it is. It's the way it is. Okay. So. I got to see if it's going to be different. <laughs> right? it's, it's not. The America <laughs> still win. So that's not true. That's not true. Ooh. Different designer, different <laughs> vision. Don't crucify me. That's not what I meant. It was a joke. No, but that's <clears> there's a ton of games out there. This is our top 10 of 2018. Yep. Uh, games that we like, take that for what you want. If it's things you might want to look into you haven't seen, go for it. But let us know other games that you like that maybe aren't in this list so that we can check them out too. So, without further ado, I'll go first. Yeah. My number 10 game from 2018 is... <gasps> this is huge box. This is Alnofi's Imperium Romanum. I call it Imperium Romanum 3, although that's not the official title. This is from Decision Games, and as you can tell, this is a huge game covering basically like the entirety of the Roman Empire. Um, Big game. It's, it's, yeah, it's literally the, the strap line is Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. It covers. Uh, that old. Ra I mean, <laughs> that's it? The rise <laughs> and fall of the Roman Empire. It's a huge game. Wow. Um, Let's make a game covering 3,000 years. I, I, mean, I know, it, but. I, what it's like, I think it's six or 700 years yeah. in the box. That's, that's a lot. You might as well make 3,000 years. Well, it's the same thing. It's three maps. It's a wow. big game. It's an ambitious game. Um, it's a huge upgrade from the older version, which was a two mapper. And it, mm -hmm. it, it shows its age and its components. Still probably a good game, I imagine. Yeah. Now, it's a game that comes in at 10 <clears> for me because it was really fun that we played with it. Um, the rules, I felt, pretty accessible considering I was quite scared of how big this game and was. And the rule book's like that thick. It's, I mean, it's a it's big huge. rule book. And there's like 60 scenarios? What, or 40? It's 48. Like 44 scenarios. Yeah. So there's a big scenario book. So Crazy. There's a lot in here. But it's, it's fun to play and... Yeah. There's a lifetime of game here to play. You and could play this every every other weekend for ten years, and I don't think you're going to cover everything. No, I mean, I really it's, don't. It's, it's it, there's just so much in there, so it's exciting as a prospect for me as well. I know that I've got a great ancients game that I'm going to be playing for years and years to come, and it is a fun one to play. So that's my yeah. number ten, which is Al Nofi's Imperium Romanum from Decision Games. Good choice. I think it was a good game. Thank you. Yeah, my turn. Yes. All right. So my number ten. And please don't gasp when this comes on screen, for those that don't know this game. Many World War II. That's quite the opposite of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it is. This game plays in two hours. You could also play in much shorter than that, too. Yeah, you could. Hour and a half to two hours. I think once you know the rules, it'll go, go quicker. It is abstracted. Combat is very, very different. Units are either boats or tanks. Yeah, land units and so, yeah. sea units. So it's a very cool card-driven game. Very slick. I liked it a lot. Yes. I think you liked it as well. I, I did. I really liked it. It's just a neat little game yeah. that 
doesn't necessarily look like a war game. No. Um, and it's people will argue, oh, it's area control and things. Uh, to me, I, it's a move in combat, and the theme yeah. is so strong in it. This is a war game to yeah. me. I it's, agree. It's on the edge, but this is a war game. Yeah. And, and once again, we like a little more eclectic mix of games. We're not just Hex Encounter. We we like all types of games. Yeah, this this may, harkens back to the early days when we play a lot of worker placement games, other yeah. Euro type games. Just well, with our game. The look and, and feel of the yeah. board. Yeah. But Formosa Force games, I, I don't know that you can get this right now. I'm not really sure I'm where sure you can you get can, it. But where you get it from is a, it good is a different so it, but it's a great game. Um, really enjoyed this. So this is my number ten, a game that I would probably play multiple times because it's just fun. Yeah, it's a it's little enjoyable. ninety minute game. It's not. It doesn't, they don't have this huge investment and no. this viciousness that you can get in other games. Yeah, it is just a fun game. I enjoy too. Well, and this. and the strategy. Just because it's fun doesn't mean the strategy is not there. No. There's a lot of depth to the strategy from where you move, when you move, how you move, what types of cards you build in your technology tree, whether you influence certain countries for victory points. I, there's just a lot of really, you developed V1 rockets and were shooting me and taking my cards away. And yeah. It made me very, very mad. <laughs> um, but it's fun. Yes. It's a fun game. That's so, a really cool game. Fun game. Mini World War II. And as big as Alexander's number 10 Imperium <laughs> Romanum is, is the opposite this one. is an entire global conflict boiled down into this little box, an itty bitty box. And I like it. So yes. check it out. That's my number 10. So my number 9 Sorry. game, um, it was just released on Kickstarter. It, it was, it was like published from Kickstarter this okay. year in 2018. And it is... From Worthington Games, ah. this is a block war game called Dunkirk France A block war game. We love block war games. I do. There are a lot of people that don't, but we love them. Yeah, I don't. Block war games to me are fun. I it's, enjoy it's a blast. The, 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 I enjoy the fog of war aspect, yep. and I I don't know. There's something really it, nice about the tactile nature of that moving around. Yep. You you, you don't get huge mm -hmm. stacks. My little meat hands can move a couple blocks here and there. It's, it's yeah. easy and enjoyable to play with. And it never, like it never ceases to amaze me that you can literally have just fought me and I cannot remember <laughs> how many strength points you have in that army it's real. It's once real. the blocks turn around. I'm too I, I, it blows my mind. So it blows this, my mind. This is not a card-driven game, but there but it are uses cards, cards in it that he like events or extra mm -hmm. bits and pieces you can tag on to your normal moving and attacking that you would normally do on your turn. And a game about Dunkirk, you might be like, oh, it's Dunkirk. The outcome is kind of it, determined. Yes, or there's only mm -hmm. one possible scenario. Right. They did a good job of this, of putting in, I think there's like six different scenarios, basically. Yes. Different and starting uh, positions and... Different goals. Yeah, you're right, you're it's, right. And it's variations on a theme, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes it's I have to go and control Dunkirk, and mm -hmm. my secondary objectives is to control another place and kill enough guys. Yeah. Or another one might be my actual goal is to just wipe the whole board, and a secondary objective is to control other things. So how they arrange the points in, you know, there's one, there's a historical scenario where it's like yeah. we're actually racing down to Paris. That's right. what we're trying to do. Ignore Dunkirk, we're trying to go to Paris. So it yeah. just changes up how you play on the board and, and and things like that. So there is decent replay in this. It's a really fun block, block and, wall game. And too. I, if I remember correctly, it plays fairly quickly. Yes, yes. We, we actually played our first game and, and we totally, I totally screwed up the setup. My A units were in my B region <laughs> and my B units were in my A region because it, it, it wasn't clear to me. So we played, and I'm like, oh, well, that's that's why I was able to do that, because all of my good panthers were there. and So we played it the right way, and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Yes. I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was realistic. I thought there was an opportunity. And if I remember correctly, I lost the game, but I was right at, at uh, yeah, Calais. Literally the very, I think. What, didn't I, hadn't I controlled Calais, and I needed one other area, but I couldn't get there. 
But I was right there. It was, yeah, it the was very close. last turn, and it was on a knife edge. Yeah. Which is the sign of a good game yeah. to me. You, you did something that stopped me in one area, and it, it was a good game. It was fun. It was tense. Easy to play. Yes. And it's a block war game. Yes. Easy to play. is. I'm surprised to see that one on your list. Not because it wasn't good. I, I, I'm just surprised. I, I really I enjoyed, I enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed it. And now that it's on your list, I'm like, yeah, I really enjoyed that. The more I think about that game and the plays yeah. I've had of it, the more I'm like, it was just a fun game. It's yeah. a fun game. I like block wall games. Yeah. Makes the list. And Doug Bryant did that game. Yes. And he's we did got, an interview with him. He's got a ton of other games that he's made, yeah. and he's got lots in the works as yeah. well. Anyway, yeah, it's a good one. So that was my number eight, Dunkirk from no, 1940 from number, Worthington Games. Your number, number nine. nine. Oh, Jeez. Your, your number nine now. Yeah, my number nine. Let's go to my number nine. Let me just make sure I've got the... Because we do have some sharing on our list. So once again, remember I, I said I like eclectic war games. I like games on not typically game subjects. Yes. I've never played a game on the New Zealand Land Wars. I don't think many people have. I, I don't even know that there's many games on it's, the New Zealand. This two. may be the only one, but I, I think there are others. So this is Maori Wars, the New Zealand Land Wars, designed by our friend John Paniski. Yes. We met him last year at WBC. And I have done multiple interviews uh, with him for the blog. Um, but a very interesting game. It's it's Hex Encounter. The map is absolutely gorgeous. What are you looking at? The No, I it, it, it is. The artwork kind of shows the map. Awesome. And this is one of the nicest looking games to have out on your table. It's yeah, it, so nice. It, it, if you haven't seen his unboxing video, it's, it's so gorgeous. And then we took some pictures and put them on Twitter. They're just absolutely stunning. But the game is fun. There's it's, a lot of really elements. Fun. You bribe uh, the tribal leaders yes. to not fight against you. There's those elements that are going on. There are gunboats. Weren't they called gunboats? Yeah, it's like a gunboat that sails around. You, it's there are like war, a steel yeah. paddle with big guns on it. Gunboat. Right there, gunboat. Uh, war canoes. I mean, there's just a lot of really... You're building paws and fortified villages and it's just and then there's that, that whole gorilla aspect where you're yep. putting guys you run into, into the bush and box yep and then they jump elsewhere on the board oh it's and they're more really powerful when one. they ambush yes just a lot of really cool thematic elements that make for a very fun game there were even some chits that you pulled out and it was like crazy stuff really like crazy your entire stuff. stack turns traitor and joins the british that was one of them. I remember, what? And then there's another one that where the British like leave because they got sick or yeah, what? like there were all kinds of all retreat, kinds so. of things like that. But a very classic war game, very simple, beautiful components, beautiful map. I really liked this game. This is a game I would love to play a couple of times more. Um, to explore the strategies, but I really enjoyed it. And a lot of history I learned playing yeah. this one, too. Yeah, because I... A ton I, of scenarios, ton of new stuff in there, too. I don't know that I knew much of anything, frankly. Yeah, same here. But from Legion War Games, and if you don't know Legion, you might be going, Who, who's Legion War Games? Well, we like Legion War yes, Games. you should correct that. Yeah. LegionWarGames.com, I think. Yeah, go, go to their website. They've got dozens of games that are absolutely amazing. And they specialize in games yeah. that cover... Different topics. That's kind of that's like Randy's thing. He's the it's their niche. He's like, if you want to, like, um, if you want to do an East Front game, don't don't yeah. call. Le He's Although Demian's Shield by Vance von Boris was is an East Front game, but it was it a, was a specific part. Yeah, which you it was great. That was a great game but from last year. That's the thing, though, is trying yeah. to get new topics, yep. unique looking war games. And Agreed. this is one of the I had a good fun time with this yeah, one too. Very enjoyable. So if you if you like a fun, different game, get get Maori Wars. It's it's fantastic. Really liked it. My number nine. So my number eight actually is also from Legion War Games and it is Nemesis Burma nineteen forty four. A great game that made my head hurt and I played the Japanese very poorly. This flies in the face of what I just said, because there's quite a few Burma games out there. But Yeah, right. Um, right. This is designed by Kim Kang, yep. who is, um, this designed a lot of games Dian out Ben there. Fu. I, I'm not going to butcher it. A bunch of other French, French names, names, but I'm not yeah, going to. not going to butcher it. But if you know Kim Kang, you know there's going to be lots of different tracks, tracking different aspects of game um, mechanisms. Mm -hmm. 
those are going to interact in really unique ways and they're going to affect the normal kind of hex encounter board you're playing on. This is no different. Um, There's just some really cool aspects of how you score points. Um, there's like, it just, this well, is a you, really neat game. When you take cities away, you lose face with your commander. They get upset. If you don't take enough, you, they get upset. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're trying to keep your commander in chief happy. You know, but you're also trying to control certain areas to gain victory. It's just a lot of really cool things. But it's, it's so cool because you're trying to keep your your kind of like theater commander happy. Yep. And the happier he gets, the happier your like supreme like superior chill gets yeah. happier because your campaign is going well. Yeah. So you've got this one track that's going up, and as it goes up a lot. Churchill's going to go up slowly, and that's going to yeah. get you more victory points. Yeah, and it's the same for the Japanese. Um, that you know, the emperor is going to be mad at you mm-hmm. if you lose, take a lot of losses, and that's manifested by your local commanders getting really, 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 really angry because yeah. you uh, attrition. It's just on top of that, you've got a very nice looking hex encounter war game, but it's all these other nuances that yeah. play into this that make it a unique game. Well, and supply is so big in this game. And it's very hard to, to um, manage over the course of the game. So too. difficult. You have don- you have uh, donkeys and... No, mules. Mules. Yeah, mules. Donkeys. Yeah, mule is just so cool. There's so many. There's chindits. There's airdrops. It's... Yeah. Man, it's a neat game. It's This is a good I, one. I want to explore this one more. This is a really, really fun one, though. But I had a great time with this. This is Nemesis Burma, 1944. This is my number eight game we did an interview with kim a couple of years ago on this so if you want to check it out on the blog that just gets you a lot of information great little game really great game uh my number eight Th- this game once again continuing my uh choice of kind of eclectic card driven non-traditional hex encounter which we love as well but so fort sumter from gmt games by mark herman uh, one of our favorite designers, both of us. He makes good we, games. We really like his games. We we met him at uh, WBC last year. We played a game with him. We had lunch with him. It was great. It was fantastic that I could sit there and talk to Mark Herman. It was amazing. I just wanted him to talk at me because I don't feel I, like I've got anything intelligent to say. I don't know that I said much <laughs> much, of, much of anything at all because I didn't want to sound like a moron. Um, no, he's a really down-to-earth guy and, and is really awesome. But Fort Sumter... Covers the secession crisis of the pre-Civil War, just before the Civil War broke out. And the game basically ends as the Civil War commences with the bombarding of Fort Sumter. Uh, Card-driven game, fantastic game. It is a simple, I think a simple, mechanically simple game. Yes. That requires a lot of depth and understanding about how the influence should best be used to score your victory points. Because you score points by controlling... uh, Areas of certain topics like the newspapers or the political realm or the secession crisis. Just a really great game. I've played this game with my wife over 35 times. We played it several times, you yeah, and we I. played it a bunch too. But my wife really likes this game and we've played it, like I said, over 35 times. So I love this game because of that. I love that there's a game out there that helped my wife and I play together and I don't know that Paisley would ever want to play many war games with me, but this yeah. is one that's not a hex encounter, nor does it have really any direct combat, but it, it has that political tug and tug of war, and I really like it. I think it's a great game. Yeah, it's got really, really tight area control aspects yep. to it, and you're using your cards for kind of ops values or events to, yep. to affect that, and then depending on which ones you have... You'll yeah. get points for you those. You have secret objectives as, as well. Yeah. You have to control these or this territory. And then you're also you're stashing away cards yep, for that for the very final end conflict. Conflict, which is very cool. And there's a lot of strategy to that, which yeah makes itself evident over the course of multiple plays. Yeah, of how to do that well. I just there's so much cool stuff. Yeah, in this, this tiny box. This is definitely a game that I, I think you need to play at fifty. 15 times before you're really going to get a good feel. And and it's been a couple of, maybe a month or two since my wife and I played it. It's going to take me a couple more games to get ramped back up. It's not hard, but it, it's hard to master. But yeah, that's Fort Sumter. I really like this game. And now look, it's in a nice little And it plays in what, box. 20 minutes, 25 uh, minutes? Tw- when you know the rules, 20 minutes. When you know the rules and you're moving through it, it's 20 minutes. 
If you don't, 30 to 35. So it's not no. not a long game. It's 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 intended to be played over a lunch hour. But yeah, great game. I really like Fort Sumter. Nice work, Mark. So that was my number eight. Eight. So uh, eight. my number seven game is... Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. This is Down in Flames, Locked On from Dan Verson Games. I've got it right around. Excellent. So uh, a lot of you have played Down in Flames. We've, so played, we've played a bunch of those, but it's always kind of propeller planes, World War II type yeah. things. And this is Wild jet Blue Yonder. Fighters, right? and, yeah. So Jets. Missiles. Who, who doesn't want to play... Top Gun, the, the game. Yeah, right. That's, I, I mean, I'm playing what this it game, is. and yep. in my brain, I've got, what was it, Kenny Loggins? Kenny, Kenny Loggins, on the yep. whole time. Going. The whole That's time. That's something we need to do. We need to have that playing, actually, when we, and try to play this. That would be fun. And I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that, that have, have played done that. this do that, because yeah. this, it's it's tactical jet fighters yeah. dogfighting, basically. So you'll have, you know, a couple of jets, and you deck them out with missile loadouts, and afterburners yeah you literally it's very similar to your normal down in flames where you just kind of mm -hmm. it's you you playing cards for positioning and altitude and then what's different is is you're not sitting there kind of spray and pray with your machine guns machine guns are worthless you're trying point. to get target locks yep and you know you play a target card and they can maneuver out of that or deploy um yep. countermeasures and if you can get a target lock, you get a tone. So you play the card and everyone at the table goes, and then and happens. then you launch your missile and you draw a little mini hand for your missile based on kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And you have to get your missile to hit the plane. So you're playing other little series of cards to do that. It's so it's so it's it's a lot of fun. And that's fun because if the missile hits you, you're dead. Right? Yeah, a it's, one, a pretty much one shot, you're dead. There's, there's no. Yeah. Oh, I take two damage no. from your machine your guns. Missiles like, don't work that if way. The missile hits you, you you're blow dead. up and you lose the game. Yeah. So I felt like the games were a little bit shorter yep. than some of the other games we played. And deadly, you you had a lot more. I felt like a lot more tension. Oh yeah, like and when we. That's, and that's what I liked about. Yeah. When we played Wild Blue Yonder, which is also a great game. Yes. And I remember thinking to myself, ah, I can take a couple uh, shots from that machine gun. My wingman, gun. Yeah. You, you attack him, no big deal. This is like, every card you play, you're like... <laughs> and, it, and it always comes down to, oh, I have one more countermeasure, but I don't have any more cards. And you pop that countermeasure to try to get that missile to go off and your opponent in his... Missile deck yeah. has that one card that counters a countermeasure. And you're just like, ah. And it's over. And it's just such great, ex ex it just, oh, so fun. Yes. So fun. And this game also does have a solitaire module. And the solitaire module is not compatible with other Down in Flames games. Only because this does have its own unique set of rules with all that yeah. extra stuff. Yeah. You may be with some house ruling, you can fudge it, but... Yeah. Right. And the solo, it actually... I think it works pretty decently. I've played yeah, it a few yeah. times. I have not played and it. And I was surprised. It doesn't... You have to understand with the solo module, what it does is it models outcomes rather mm. than the process of how another player would play. Got it. And that's... So it took me a little bit to wrap my head around why. I was like, why are they doing that? Mm. And after I played the first few games, I was like, yeah, how those ended is exactly how Games With You ended. Mm -hmm. And so, so I was satisfied so it, you got by the that. same result, just a different process. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a little bit, it was a bit of a paradigm shift of how mm. to make that work. And I'm like, why is the AI doing that? This is dumb. Yeah. It didn't make any sense to me, but I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's like, I look at the overall situation and I'm like, yeah, that's no, exactly that's, what you that's would how do. That would have happened. Yeah. Okay. So th that, that's one thing I enjoy. A bonus for this game at yeah, least. That's one thing I enjoy about solo systems when you're, questioning why in the world are they and then you realize oh it reveals itself that's why they're doing it or it doesn't and it was a terrible AI system. well yeah and that's that, not the case with this one this yeah. was a really this was a blast very to play good. solitaire so i had a great time with this a very tense game to play with other players yep um only played it two play you can play it with multiple players you that, can that would be interesting but it's, oh, we it's just a don't fun have... little two player card game yeah. it is fun to do we that. don't have other people that want to play with us so we have to play a two player yeah so. I think this this supports up to six players if you so chose yeah so this is my number seven game down in flames locked on
which I will spoil it, slide over the yeah. table to you. For you, some you said number seven. Are you sure it was? Yes, number seven? it's number seven. Okay. Yeah, because it's my number seven too. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's great news. Yeah. So, wow, that's interesting. We like it exactly the yeah. same amount. I, I love the game. I I think everything you said is actually absolutely how I feel. I love it. It's fun. It's just an absolute fun war game. Period. Yeah. Great mechanics. I love the 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 combat cards, the the jets, the missiles. It's just it's just a fun game. And there's that's all I can say. There's about. a bunch of campaigns in there as right. well, right? Which is really nice. You don't just have to sit here and it's like, well, we're playing some planes against each other, right? There's, I mean, there's campaigns from Korea, Vietnam, <clears throat> um, Desert Storm, yeah, Arab Israeli War. There's a there's just a, a bunch. Just so you can have some theme and you can. Take your planes along and things yeah. get destroyed. You get points over time. You get that aspect of it as well if you wanted to do it that way. So yeah. just this is a fun game. Yeah. Down in flames locked on my number seven. Our number seven. Our number which seven. Which is so interesting. So number six is... Number a, six. Another aerial war game. Oh, surprise, surprise. I can't help myself. This is Night Fighter Ace from Compass Games. Designed by Greg Smith. You know great, him great from um, The Hunters, Silent Victory. Silent Victory, all those kind of solitaire games. Mm-hmm. This is another one, and it uses the same basis of, of those other right. systems. Just in the air. Yes. Right. And he's got a whole line of these coming out. Interceptor Ace, West Front Ace. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool to see how he's taken it's, that it's, sub... Type game yeah. and now turned it into a whole series of aerial games, and that and that's fascinating how he's yeah. taken that system, and put it into an entirely different style yep. of combat. Yep, um, and, and, it, and this works really, really well. It does. I've played this game a lot because it's it's these smaller games. Mm-hmm. I can set it up at my lunch break at work. Fifteen minutes. I can roll through a, yeah. a good number of missions because the missions in this are very, very quick. Um, you basically, you have your night fighter, be it a Messerschmitt 110 or a Heinkel, you know, if you have a, these night fighters, you basically launch in the air based on where you are located. You get X number of rolls mm-hmm. to try and find the bombers in the middle of the night. And a lot of those rolls end up, you, you don't find them. Yeah. Until depends. you really improve your skill level. Yeah. And you then can, you're finding them on like a 7 to 10. Right. right. And if, if you've got a good radar <laughs> operator and a good yeah. radar system, you can find them more easily. Clear weather is easier to find them, I think. It, yeah. If there's Bad full moon, worse, like that, yeah. it's literally easier to see them. So you level up your guys like that, gain skills and experience just like you would expect. Um, yeah. But basically, you find a bomber... You unload all your machine guns and cannons on it, and hopefully you shoot the thing down. Hopefully it doesn't shoot you down back. Uh, because that's the big difference in this, is I felt like Silent Victory, um, your sub can take a little bit of a beating. You can <laughs> pump out the water if you need to. Uh, but when you... When you blow up, right? When you're flying at 25,000 yeah. feet, you lose your oxygen, you have to go down. Or your like, wing. You are bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you're, if you get hit in the fuel tanks, it's over. You, yeah. you will die. Um, and this this game uses cards yes, to simulate is, the fire that you take as well as the, as damage. the damage you do. And yeah. that's really neat how that works. Basically, what you if you find a bomber, you basically position yourself how you want to attack, which weapons you want to use. You mm-hmm. want to use front-facing cannons or your kind of upward-facing Schrager music cannons. And you, you draw a card, and the mm-hmm. card will say... Oh crap! They spotted you, and you'll take fire first. Right, which is very bad. That's rare. Or it's you get to fire. And is it rare? I feel like it happens to me a lot. Yeah, we just yeah, we have bad luck. Very bad I luck. Think. Or you fire first, and you do X amount of damage, basically based on how many cannons you fire. Mm-hmm. And those damage you cross reference on a little table, a little chart that tells you if your aim point was the fuselage. You'll do damage to this, 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 and this. Yeah. Or if you're aiming at the port wing, you'll do this, 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 and this damage. Mm-hmm. And so if you do enough damage to Usually a certain thing, two, I think, to each area. If you can do two damage to each area, it's done. Mostly right. some, some like the yeah. superstructure of the plane has a few more hit points. But you're trying to like cut the wing off or blow up an engine here to force the planes down. Yeah. That's how you score points yep. in this one. Yep. 
Um, but you have to confirm your kills, which is also cool. Yeah, if okay. if you if you kind of hit a couple engines uh, out, I think he went and down. They, bomb, no. they still drop their bombs. Yeah, they fly home. You're gonna roll to see. Oh, maybe someone spotted them go down. Yeah. Like, it's but they never do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, this is just it's more of that solo game. Mm-hmm. This is a really fun one because yeah, your your plane is paper thin. Like I feel like you get beat up quite a bit. Yeah. But just, it, it's realistic, like, yeah. You're getting shot at by pretty heavily armored flying fortresses, basically. Yeah, and you, you're just you have some a yeah. steel frame with some canvas on you, basically, yeah. and you'll get shot to death. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, I got out of it. You limp back home, get a new fight uh, two days later, go back yep. up again. One of the things I really like was that pressure luck because you know you have a little damage. Oh, my wing has. A hit and my engine has a hit and it's like do that I you're half dead. Well yeah. <laughs> do I return wasting any opportunity to get another kill, or do I press my luck and go for it? And more often than not, I press my luck and go for it. And th- th- but, that's but then that's the nice thing. In silent victory, you're like, Oh, I can I can push it, I can risk it. Yeah. It's very calculated, I felt you because you yeah. could you could withstand a, a couple of cycles of destroyers with death charges. This one you're like Anytime you try to look for a second yeah. plane, you're like, I, I will probably <laughs> die if I mess this up. Yeah. Like it's, it's you're alive or you're dead. It's <laughs> very yeah, little it's, middle ground. It, this is a great game. I enjoyed it too. I, I don't have it on my top ten list, and I feel bad, Greg. We we love this game. We really do. I've played this a bunch. Um, I need to play it more. I need to take a guy the entire way through his career. Um, it's so good, and the art is so amazing. The cover, I remember when the cover came out, I thought, that is a sexy, sexy war game right there from Compass. They just do such a great job with their art. So, great game. Yes. So, that's my number six, Night Fighter Ace from Compass Games. Okay. Good one. Once again, another eclectic, and I swear I have some Hex Encounter war games coming <gasps> do up. Do you? I've got the hiccups. This is terrible. Yeah, I know. What What are you I'm doing? Just, just start happening. Are you just so bad. excited that you, you can't you. breathe? My number six is a card-driven game from PSC Games, designed by Martin Wallace, called Lincoln. It is a, 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 an American Civil War game. You play the Union and the Confederates. You have cards. You have units. The really cool elements of this game are the way you take losses. You know, if you win, you take X amount of losses, which is usually less than your opponent, but you have different denominations of units, and you, it's always like half rounded down, yes, or half rounded up. The attrition in this game yeah, is, is real, fascinating, and I found that to be very interesting. And more so than that, your units—I think they're numbered from three to one. So you have like units yes. that are three power, two power, and one power, and you can't split them up. You cannot split them up. So if you have a stack of a three, a two, and a three. And you draw that dead, dreaded, or you know, you lose, and you're like lose half your units, round it up. Guess what? You you can't break your units in half. You you lose your two, and then you lose one of your threes, and they're gone. So you, in effect, lost five guys. Yeah, and it's the cost input of the cards you had to play to get those out. I mean, right? It's absolutely killer. It's just so you have to it really is cool the way you have to think about building your stacks and what combats you do and what combats you don't mess with i love the cards because the cards for the csa start out pretty darn good they get worse they degrade over time you kind of add a new deck every turn every time you you get basically you run your deck runs out you right. put a bunch of new cards yeah like 10 or 12 new cards for the for the csa they get weaker much weaker. Much weaker. But for the Union, they get more and more powerful. So, really, the CSA has to win it within that first couple of rounds, or their chances of winning are significantly reduced. I love that as well. So, it's also deck destruction, because when you use a certain card to bring a unit out, you can't put that card back in your deck. You have to get rid of it. So, you only have a certain amount of cards to get your powerful three units out, or to do some of the more powerful attacks. I just thought it was really... A well-designed, tight game that was fun. We absolutely had a, a great time playing this. Yes. You could win through combat. You could win through maneuvering. You could win through affecting 
I'm trying to think what that one support uh, the the uh, European support track. Yeah, where you you know the CSA through victories was trying to get up to the point where if they could get that's like a England said, oh, we're going to give you money and supplies and you win the game, or you can just destroy that chance and make it very very hard for the Confederates to get anything, but. Really well designed game that is is beautiful. This is a very well put together game. Yes, I agree. This was a, a absolute blast to play. I think this is one is on your list as well. Isn't it is, it? yes. So I'll just hand it over to you because I think it's a couple away. But so, my number, so anyway, yeah. You know, that was your number. That was my six, number six, which is Lincoln from PS. PS yeah. It's from PSC Games and Worthington and games. Worthington Games. But yes, they, they did a Kickstarter and. Yeah, great so game. Great. My game. number five is Lincoln from yeah. PSN, <laughs> which is so funny. Yes, yeah. I guess we play games together. I don't know. We, like we do. Them. <laughs> I guess if we played these games with other people and came together and make this list, and we felt the same, that would be. This game is just but we so played, fun. Though. It's so good. You get the whole, you get the whole American Civil War in in a couple hours. In an hour and a half. And yeah. It does it without? I mean, it's still really fun. The war game aspect mm-hmm. is still really good, but it's simple, it's beautiful, and the one thing that I liked that I don't think we talked about, um, it was, oh gosh, I, I just, oh, that's what, so, when we reviewed this game, mm-hmm. a bunch of people got on and were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah. like, well, what about how it's, it's broken, totally broken? But, yeah. And I was like, what? what? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And they referenced a review by Marco for an a, early review, for I think probably ago. of a prototype. It was a, it was a pre-production pro- yeah. prototype copy that was broken. Mm-hmm. But we played it. We played and this game fixed twice, it. and there's absolutely nothing broken about it. Yeah, because it had been totally fixed, and that's why we didn't talk about it in the review because I had no idea. Yeah, and everybody was like, was "Why didn't you talk about broken. that?" Well, we didn't talk about it because it had been corrected, and we weren't aware of that beforehand. Yeah, we was, don't know everything about every game. No, no. There was I wish a, we did. But. There was a, and it was. After reading about it, it was majorly broken. Like, it was... Well, and it was the defense strength of Washington... It was a two. From the southern half was like... Yeah, it was like a two was or two. a three. Which, and in this game, they had made it a ten. Yes. So it was very, very hard for the Confederates to attack. Yeah, because before, the Confederates just put a huge stack there... And it run up and totally destroy. Totally yeah. paralyze... Um, yeah. Paralyze the Union, and they couldn't do anything. But that this, this allows the Union to put one, maybe two guys there, knowing that they have that backup of a 10 yeah. strength. They've got time to deploy some other units and yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. So it totally fixes list. the problem. Yeah. So that's one thing that I wanted to address. Yeah. That's why this game is so high on my list, because I felt like it tells a really good story of yeah. the Civil War, which well, I'm not that well versed on, but this game has a narrative. The, the ebb and flow of this game, I feel like, is historical and the way mm-hmm. that it goes through that, that um, kind of building and destruction you talked yeah. about. And it was just really fun to see the game progress oh, from start great. to finish. And, I, and I, that's what I really liked. It's a beautiful game, beautiful production yeah. as well. And it is very reasonably priced. It is. Which and is and nice. each game is different. I, I know we played a couple of times, several times, and it's like... I remember one of our... I think it was our third game, maybe... You were moving, you had gotten a small group of soldiers as the Confederates up around in Pennsylvania, and all you were doing, you literally were doing circles. Yeah, we them. were doing wild goose chasing to prevent you from doing yes. that thing. So, I could so really you were preventing me from running down, and it was just, I remember thinking, this is so great. Because that's exactly what Stonewall Jackson did in, in the Shenandoah Valley. It was just like really cool that. That was represented in that in that game. Yeah. I just thought it was really well designed, and there's so many different things you can do to win. Yeah, and it, I like that. This I like is a it. Great game. Um, yeah. This is what going to be a, probably a mainstay in the collection for a while. Yeah, and I'm not embarrassed to say this is on my top ten list because this yeah. is a great game. But it is a card, kind of a deck building, card driven game with events and and points, and it's just it's really good. Yes, it's really good. So yes, this is my number five, yep. Lincoln from PSC Games and Worthington as well. Yeah. So my number five, this is the first real serious Hex Encounter War game on my list. <laughs> you look at this, go, Ooh, that's a good one. That's a damn good game. Um, we played this, I believe, in March. It was of last it was year. it was early 2018. Yeah, yeah I, I got it. I think it was one of our very first 
2018 games. We were excited. When I punched it and clipped it, I remember looking at all the colors of the formations. and It's Chip Hall. What's not to like about yeah, Chip Hall? I mean, this game is, is awesome. Alexander wrote a full review on it. We did a review video. I did a couple of action points describing some of the random chaos of the chit draw. Remember my infamous charge of the light cavalry oh brigade God, across an open field so into funny. a line of cannons, and I could do nothing about it. I had to do it. That's still one of the best aspects of this game, mm-hmm. is that when you get yourself... is it? At, it's not out of support, it's out of command. Out of command. Like, you have to draw that random chit, and it can be anything. Like, it can be nothing happens... But I, I love it. Oh, so, so cool. many times when you're out of command, you're like, half movement, you can't attack. That's normal in normal games. Which is, which is fine. It's, it's for kind of boring. Terms, yeah. Yeah. But this is like, no, no, no. Yeah. You're out of command. This so is... your little kind of sergeants and lieutenants are taking the initiative, and sometimes they make terrible decisions. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. And I'm like, I love that. What did the commander say? Did he say charge that line of cannon? And you're like, no. And you're like, but we're going to do it. And he's like, no. But we're gonna win yeah, ourselves some just, medals. So, so so fun. The map on this one's gorgeous. The it's counters beautiful. are great. Uh, Herm, Herman Lutman did this game, and it is the, the combat system is a little more on the deep and complex side. Yes, there's a lot of elements. I like that you roll all the dice at once. Yeah, and then you and the kind different of color like tea leaves. I, I, <laughs> kind of like bones in a <laughs> in an ancient shaman's. Uh, but it's so cool and. It's very brutal. It's a it's a big game as well. It is very big. It, there's small um, scenarios and stuff, but you you can set this up and push counters around for a good yeah. t- a good long time. I really liked this. I think early on when we first played this, I thought, oh man, I think I might have found <laughs> my number one, and this one ended up being my number five. I, I love it though. It's so a Herm, really don't good one. don't take that as an insult. This is a great game. Uh, GMT Games, great production. Really en- enjoy this and game. New history for me as well. Yeah, I'm not. I don't didn't know much, much about, about the Franco Prussian War. Um, yeah, just a great game. Br- I really liked brutal, it. Brutal, brutal combat and attrition. And, and I remember we played it. Just a, an anecdotal. We played it when our wives were out of town on a spring break trip. They had taken the kids to a. That was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was fantastic. <laughs> and I think I left work a little early that day. We got some pizza. I think we finally wrapped up at 1. It was late. 1 a.m. after playing. I think we played for seven hours and shot a video. I mean, it was just, it was, and I I wasn't tired. I remember thinking, if I didn't have to go to work at 7 a.m., I would have stayed till 2 or 3 or 4 and just kept playing. But great game. Very, really very, liked very it. Very My number game. five, at any cost, Mets 1870 from GMT Games. Nice work, Herm. Really like this one. My number four game is, we're going to continue the theme of Air War. Mm. <laughs> this is a, huge, a heavy box. a huge box. And this is Skies Above the Reich, also from GMT Games. This is designed by, um, it's Jerry White, who makes uh, amazing games, but also Mark Arsted. Uh, he's uh, it's a co-design here. So this is a solitaire slash co-op game there's like competitive rules which is yeah we played competitive and it was it's not really it gave me an understanding of the game but it i'm playing this as a solo game yeah Yeah. um this is a huge three inch box and it's full of (laughs) gibbon zimoin yeah so it's there's like a bunch of mounted map boards in here that are double-sided um there's a ton of blocks Although it is a not ton. a block war game, right? It's just that instead of having counters, they have blocks, which, which is it's kind of weird, but it it works. Yeah, it's it's just nice. It's yeah. very very well produced, right? You you get your money's worth of game yeah. in this box. Yeah, um, it's really really interesting how this one plays compared to other kind of air war games that cover a similar topic mm-hmm. that are solo. This one has because you play as the Germans trying to shoot down all the yeah. all the daylight bombing raids. So for me, it, that that felt a little bad. I'm not gonna lie, but that that's me. It's a game. It's but, a game. Uh, basically, you have the board, and the board has literally formations of B-17s mm-hmm. printed on, on it. On the board, in formations with kind of um, areas and bits and pieces in between them. 
And that being printed on the map is very cool. Yes. I, I saw where some people thought that was not cool. But really? I was like, it worked really well. I, see, I thought that it's was... It's the crux of the game. I really. thought it was a really cool design choice. Yeah, I agree. To, to reverse. Because yep. a, lot, a lot of the times it's like, you know, here's my counters of my bombers in a formation. Mm-hmm. Or it's just some abstraction of how yeah. that is. He, it's literally printed on the board. And I'm moving my fighters in between that formation across the board. Yeah. And you're shooting from different angles and positions. And literally, this B-17 that's printed on there, I might put, like, a destroyed or downed marker on it if I shoot the thing yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, I don't know. I really, really like this game. Yeah. And, fascinating, unique design. Well, and, and it, it was funny. We talked about Night Fighter Ace previously. Really, they share a lot of elements in the design. And I remember, I remember talking to Greg in one of my interviews. I, I can't remember which one it was for. But, but he made the comment... He was thinking about, oh, I want to do this this solo, you know, night fighter game. And then he was like, Jerry White beat him to the punch. And then he <laughs> kind of did afterwards or after night fight. But it they work. They both work. Yeah, they're, both, they're, both, they're both different. They're different. They give a different experience. But what I do like about them is that, that old shot down landing roll. Oh, yeah. When you're damaged and you're flying back in both night fighter ace and this, you have a chance of crashing on landing. And that role is very tense. What I what very I enjoyed tense. about this is there's a bit more detail in this one. Agree. Um, like it, it depends where you got shot. Depends yep. which role you'll make and how good your odds are. Yep. So if you've got a flaming engine, it's not. It's good. trouble. But if yep. you just got peppered and you know your ailerons are, you're out, fine. Yeah, better chance. Yeah. You know, if your land gears up. <laughs> yeah. But. This one is really neat, and I, this has a lot of Jerry White written all over it. From the way the rules are laid out, the play charts, this is one of his games where you can just set it up, mm-hmm. and you can play immediately from the rules, basically, from, from all the different flip charts yeah. that you use. And I really I like his designs for that reason. Easy one to pick up and play. Yeah. So this is my number four, Skies Above the Reich from GMT Games. And I'm sure you're looking forward to Storm. Above the right. Oh, heck yes. Which is kind of the follow-up. Yes. I think late war. So that'll be interesting. I'm sure you'll be uh, very excited about that one. Absolutely. My number four is also a solo game, but not a game from GMT or other publishers. It's it's from a publisher that I've really grown to really like this year, Dan Versen Games. This is Pavlov's House, designed by David Thompson, The Battle of Stalingrad. This game, I've I've played this, I think it's nearly 20 times, because it is just, it's simple, it makes sense, but it's fun. There's a lot of decisions about where you put guys, where you move them, how you equip them, which stacks you shoot at, who you try to prevent coming in, and the game takes a look at the entire Battle of Stalingrad on three, it's one map, Yes. but there are three sectors to that map. There's the overall operational side where you're getting supply across the river, uh, the Volga, supplying troops, you're you're building a chain of command that gives you different actions. Um, Stukas are dive bombing you and you're trying to shoot them down. And all of that has an effect on the tactical side of the map, which is the inside of the apartment building, uh, fortified apartment building, where the guys are moving around trying to shoot the approaching Wehrmacht army counters, which are in the middle part of the map. And they just all work together. You follow them in a sequence. You have cards. You draw them. It's random what units come out. The, each game's going to be different. Each game's going to have a different a res, a result. You actually win only if you you survive the, the assault. Um, if you ever get overrun, it's over, you lost. You don't have a, but you might have a minor victory or a major victory or a hero of the Soviet Union if you really scored a lot of points by killing a lot of units and not losing your own guys. But a fantastic game. I really liked this. They have a follow-up coming out, not about the Battle of Stalingrad, but Castle Itter, which is another uh, siege-type game of a Bavarian castle, I think, in... Yes, a very uh, unique conflict, which... Yeah. Look that up. It's Fascinating fun. piece of history. 
But I did a playthrough video of this. We did a video review together. We played yeah, cooperatively. We played the co-op. This is a solo game. Yeah. The co-op's fine. but The co-op solo. works, but really it, I think it should be used to teach people. Yeah. Like if you have somebody that really understands the game, you can play co-op so that everybody else will understand how the... Very clean, very quick. I love this game. I yes. thought it was great. I've played it o over 20 times now. So uh, I really like it. Yeah, I, what I enjoyed is the different scales. So that yeah, uh, you you know you've got card play, trying to get your supplies and in, in your communications network, yeah. and then you've got this encroaching, almost states of siege like. Yep. Here's the tracks where the Germans are moving in from the different sides. Yep. And then it's literally like, hey, Vasily, run over to that window. Go, go over to that window, yeah. and you will shoot, shoot out that, that guy. window. Yeah. It, it, it is it, that granularity and that's it's great it really works really fun and you have actions you have a certain amount of limited actions you can get more actions by doing a whole lot of things but it's so cool it's just a great game this is a really cool solo game that i think is very engaging and it's fun to play yes so that's my number four pavlov's house nice nice job dan verson games and david thompson i look forward to more work from you by the way he volunteered to come over and play with us if he just lives in Dayton, Ohio. Really? Yeah. So he uh, sent an email and he's like, "Hey guys, you want to meet up?" I'm like, "Uh, yeah." Obviously. So we're I'm trying to work on that. He's coming to Gen Con too, so we'll we'll see him there. Sweet. Well, but that's my number four. <laughs> so my my number three game of 2018 is also one we played pretty early on in the year as well. Yes. And it is another a gigantic box, <laughs> which is standard for flying pig games. Yes. And this is Armageddon War. Uh, this is a, it's Hex Encounter War Game, and this is a future hypothetical war game, um, and it's got its own kind of history and story in it, mm -hmm. they do, you know, explain it in kind of the scenario playbook type thing, but it's sort of modern and near, very near future combat, mm -hmm. so you're, you're looking at Soviet tanks that you'd see now with a few different bits and pieces and missile launchers stuck on top of them. Um, you've got M1 Abrams with extra bits and pieces and things like that. Um, but you've also got um, pretty rudimentary technicals and bits and pieces for um, Islamic State jihadist right. forces. Militia forces. Different yeah. factions in the game. Hand-carried so, rocket launchers that shoot 14 miles across the map. Yeah. so it's, so cool. It's This is modern warfare, effectively modern warfare. Little Near future. On top of that. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you. This is a game that when it was announced, I had basically no interest in it. And I don't I didn't have no interest. I didn't have a ton of interest. We're more World War II. Yeah, and it's but simply but, because of the theme. Right. Right. That's it's just not a theme which I'm like, ooh, I love that. Theme. I gotta do that. Some people are. Right. But this is number three on my list because it's so damn the good. The game design is unbelievably good. Um, there's so much to this game. We did a full review that's quite, I was quite extensive. Go watch that. Um, from the, the activation of units to the, the bucket of dice, yep. custom dice chucking. Colored dice, really colored dice that do different, yes. different powers, right? It's just so cool. And the counters they've got, basically color coded systems for mm -hmm. weapons and things like which Flying Pig do a lot of. Yep. And then they, I think their new Platoon Commander Deluxe has a similar yep. aspect to it like that, which is nice. But I wish they used the trapezoidal flag counters. Yes. But that's that's an argument for another time. But that's that's one of those these things. Y you know, a lot of games you get like a fired or a moved status marker. Right. Or if you take damage, you get like a disrupted marker. This game uses um, an escalating system. But it's like a square counter with a triangle flag on the side. So yeah. it's like the shape of a little house. So so you've yeah. got your stack of units and stick out the side is a big red three mm -hmm. or a blue two. And that tells you exactly the status that your units are in. Right. Um, and, and I just, it's so neat. You're not flicking through stacks to do you, things. You can readily tell what's going on in each stack across the board. By just looking yep. at it. By I, the color and the, the number on the negative one or negative two. And and you basically, mm -hmm. you gain one step back each time you activate. Yeah. But each time you do something or take damage, you'll you'll go from yep. one to two to three to four. So they're like blown up basically. Yeah. So there's a ton of escalation to how that works. 
the activation initiative system means this you don't like. Here's round one. Let's do everything. Nope. Here's round two. Everyone activates. There are again. no rounds. My, it's just continual. Yeah. You've got basically like they're like his fifty activations. You have to yeah. complete the combat between that, and it's this rolling activation system, that, and it's just chip draw. Yeah. Right. E- each side has a certain amount of units, and you put them in this cup, and you draw them out, and then when certain things happen, you put them back in the cup, and it's like it just continues. You don't put all of them back in the cup. Yeah. It's this rolling. Yeah. It's oh. so interesting, and it. You never have like a downtime phase. No. Or a re- refresh. No. Phase. It's just continual, and it feels it just like goes it's over and over con- again. You find a whole battle start to finish without pause, yeah. and that is. So much fun to experience it is. in this game. I remember when Mark talked, I did an interview with Greg Porter and Mark uh, Walker on this game, and they were trying to describe that system to me. I remember thinking, I don't understand. You have to play it to understand. My goodness. They pulled it off. Yeah, they, so they did good. a great job. This is a great game. Yeah. And it's, hint, it's on my list coming, <laughs> coming up soon, um, but it's a great game. But yeah, this that's Armageddon War. It's a big game, yep. very well produced. I, you know, it's flying pig games, everything you'd yeah. expect from them, but a fantastic system. And it, it has an expansion, Burning Sands, that has a, another faction or two in it. Yeah, whole and it has some solo, Alone in the Sand, yeah. which I'm going to be honest, I have not played. Um, I need to break it out. I just haven't. And I think the base game has a solo system. It does, but it. remember it was more of a solo like a bot defense. It was Yeah. It was different, different from the solar system, but there's a couple that you can play solo. Right. Yeah, you're right. So great game. I agree. Yes. Uh, that's it's coming up on three Armageddon War. It's platoon level. Love platoon that scale level. As well. It it's feels just, very intimate, very upfront, but it's not always tied into the minutia. Super crunchy. And and the the assault was really cool too. Just, I think we figured that out at, at later in the games we played, and it was like it, it was on like Donkey Kong. Yeah. You know, we, we were like, oh, I'm gonna assault you now, and it's just great. Great, great fun, great stuff. So my number three is another American Civil War game that we really enjoyed. Battle Him Volume One, Gettysburg and P Ridge from Compass Games, designed by Eric Lee Smith. There is a volume two coming out. Uh, this year, but I I can't remember the battles. I'm going to tell you, this is a great game. It is. I loved the system. It felt a lot like At Any Cost, which was a game we just talked about a a couple of rounds ago. Had some similarities, felt similar. Just really liked it. And and I, from from the thematic element... Live it, trying to make it through the Battle of Gettysburg I, as the CSA is, is just very, very heartbreaking, very difficult. The Union has the high ground. The Union has the good defenses. And this game punishes you if you have to attack in certain areas. And that's the way it was. It's a very brutal game. Very brutal. And that's, I think that's the similarities you're talking about with at any cost. Yeah. Same thing when you're getting shot at from... It's just... You get savaged by things like yeah. terrain, attacking up a hill. Yep. Someone's got plunging fire with a cannon. Yeah, it's just good luck. It, it's this is also a ton of attrition. A, this is yeah. very very bloody game, which is fascinating to play. Yeah, and, and and you know, I'd love to play this game a lot more too. Uh, it, it's one that has caught my attention, and it's one that I'm going to try solo. But it's just well designed. It's well put together. The maps are absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful game, yeah. Counters yeah. are good, too. The, the maps, literally, you could put in a frame and put on the wall, and it would look really fantastic. A, a great game. I really enjoyed Battle Him. And this um, is a two-pack. You get P. Ridge in here as you well. You do. Which, you know, two for one, basically. Yes. Uh, the scenario. There's lots of scenarios. Some that cover a couple of hours. Some that cover one day of the Battle of Gettysburg. And then you can do the whole campaign thing over, yeah, over the entire you can, time. So. You can play this game in a couple hours for a short scenario, or you can play it like a couple days yeah. if, if you wanted to play the whole thing. Yeah, ch- check out our video review, because I think you'll get a feel for what we thought of the game. It's it's very good. Very good war game. I'm glad I got this one. Yes. Bought this one at WBC, and I, I don't regret it. So, my number three. My number three. Okay. My number two war game... Of 2018 is... This is kind of a cheat. 
Yeah, a little bit. Because it's a remake. Bit. Second edition. This is Pacific Victory from Columbia Games. Another block war game. We talked about block war games earlier with Dunkirk. And a Pacific war game. Yeah, this this checks a lot of boxes yeah, for, for us. myself. Um, it, this is a second edition. Uh, so is it really a 2018? I'm calling them one. Yeah, care. right. But uh, it's a great game. Oh, God damn, we actually good. played played on your birthday. That's right. Remember, we played the yeah. entire day. Your wife was very good to us, and we played the entire day. Yeah, I was. It was awesome. I was just like, I took the day off work. I was yep. just expecting to just have a lazy day, and then like Kelly just like took the kids and left. Yeah, and, like it was you awesome. Up and we played this. It was all day. awesome. And I'm like it was the best day ever. And I remember our first play, we messed some rules up pretty significantly, but we corrected that. But it yeah, that there it's just really cool. It's a cool game. Oh, God. Very cool. I I love a good Blanc War game. Yeah, I love a Pacific game. This puts those two together. The the board is really big. Yes, <laughs> and the spaces are big, and the Blancs are big. It's just like. It's almost like a beer and pretzels war game. I, I agree. You sit there just kind of pushing blocks around, yep. getting into some good dice chucking. It's fun. Ugh, it's just a fun game. And that's what I want from a war game. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's Pacific Theater. I'm decently versed on Pacific Theater, so I'm not necessarily like picking up like, oh, here's some new interesting of, stuff. Yeah. I just want to get into it and play it and play it in a sitting, and you yeah. can do that with this. It, it was really interesting. I learned a lot about the Chinese forces. Yes. There were a lot of very interesting historical things that were put in there. You don't build the Burma Road or any of that stuff. But it was it was very interesting to see their role in this game. Um, I wish they had more of a role and better units. But it was very interesting because you actually get to play those units. Uh, I, I don't know. Just very well done. I I think the, the Dalglish uh, guys really know how to do... Definitely know how to do a block war game, but I think they know how to do war games in general. That's a good game from Columbia Games. Yeah, it's it's it's. Oh, I gosh, I don't know. I have just really enjoyed this. Yeah, um, it's got some really neat concepts of how they basically have, they kind of stretch the map and and how you have to move around so that they could keep it to large hexes and not have yeah. a board that was the size of your house. Yeah, right, right. Um, and the other thing that was really fun was. You just, during like typhoon season, you roll for yep. those typhoons that show up. Yeah. And it just pins units in this little kind of a seven hex area. And I remember and that. And it can happened. really screw you over. Or it can really help you. I remember it happened a couple of times to me and I was like, oh, I could have really done a killing blow there. And it's and I'm like, like <laughs> a little you just got there. saved by that. But very fun. Very cool. I like it. I'm surprised it's so high on your list, but oh God, it definitely that. is fun and definitely a really good game. Yeah, it just this game checks a ton of boxes well, yeah. for me, and that's why it's it's my number two it, war game of 2018. It's your list. It is. It's your prerogative. Loved it. Everybody's asking me what's wrong with Grant's list. You know what? <laughs> what's what's he doing? Um, my number two game. You're gonna have to hand it to me. What am I fishing at? Oh, uh, <sighs> sorry. Yeah, hide it. Oh, look, it came from my side of the table. Cataclysm. I don't know what to say about this game other than it's awesome. Oh my god! It is so a complete good. sandbox game of World War II. I, on a very operational scale. And it's grand, it's grand tactics. It's grand, well, but I mean, you, you just got one or two units and that's about it. Yeah, I think France is made up of like three spaces. It, it's not about that. It's about yeah. so many other elements than just the units and the combat. A big part of the game, but it's the politics, economics, uh, economics, the stability of your yeah. uh, regime and faction, their struggle over uh, Spain, their struggle over North Africa, as far as political going back. It's just really covers so many very interesting and it's chip pull. Yeah. And it's chip pull that is so cool. It's yeah. It's, like I remember one time I, I think I said to you if if this chip doesn't get drawn, the game is gonna end soon. And I drew that chip. And it's just it was so cool to see that happen, but it took some planning for me to get that to happen. Because remember you can I can't remember how you do it, but you put some chits in and you can take some chits out and it just... You basically... You know when there's chits in there, they're going to go your way if you play it right. Yes. By the way you take your actions. 
And I thought that was really cool. The combat is very cool and fun. My French troops have held off your Germans many, many times. <laughs> That's so um, which, which is hilarious <laughs> to me, but it just... It, it, if the if your air units you know fight it out and you gain air superiority you get a bonus and then you went down to the ground combat and it's like yeah we're pretty even yeah they were like it great but I got bonus and we roll and it's like it anything can happen and I just love that about this about this game I just think there's so many outcomes that can happen that are a a historical and that's great yeah it starts in 1930 is it six. 36 or 37, I think. Yeah, 1936 and goes through, uh, you know, the end of the war. I want to say you can play until 46 or 46. Or, so, yeah. But it's just, it's so cool that that extra time is given to you to kind of plan out your strategy. Yeah. To decide, am I going to am I gonna go heavy into war? Am I going to try to do a little politic, politicking and take over areas and territories? I don't know, just a really cool game. Yes. Lots of depth. I, we have barely scratched the surface on this one, I'm going to be honest. I'd love to play this one hours and hours more. This is a desert island game. Yeah, I, I agree. Great game. Cataclysm, GMT Games, uh, William Turtislavich and Scott Muldoon. I did an interview with them. The interview yeah. actually appeared in the playbook, in the print playbook, which is very, very cool. That was very nice of them. I'd, li- I'd like to frame that and put that on the wall of my, my game room, but... Really a great game, and uh, I think these two guys hit, hit hit the ball out of the park. So, my number two. You might ask, why, why didn't I put it in number one? Well, there was a game that I just enjoyed just a little bit more. But anyway. The, well, I didn't. This is I my don't. number one game. It's yeah. Cataclysm. Yeah. I, there's so much in this box. This is not just an, a European theater game. It has the whole of the Pacific as well, which we just talked about with the Pacific Victory. It's All a big right. deal for me. I'll just kind of show you on the back. Boop. Got maps of both Europe and Pacific. And you can put them out and play them together. Yep. You and do can play both total war together. That would blow my mind. And that, that can be very, very big. And yeah. you can do that and you can play with seven players doing that yep. if you wanted to. You're right. I think it's seven. Six or seven, I think. Five. Five. Okay, five. Whatever. But yeah, you can get a bunch of buddies together and do that if you want to. Upside down. Or not. Um, this is such a cool game. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're managing your own little empire, basically. You have to manage yeah. diplomacy, politics, building your forces, economics, military buildup, and you have to do. You're trying to do all that stuff and do it well, but ultimately, you're like the supreme commander. Mm-hmm. So you don't you don't have all that much input in what happens necessarily in the Operation Barbarossa. Battle. Yeah. Barbarossa is basically two or three spaces. Yeah. And yeah, your field commanders take care of that. But you're just like, I'll give you the troops to do it, you you do that for me, right? Yeah. And so what happens is you're spending all of your resources and, and um, everything at your disposal to buy, oh, I'm going to buy a navy. Oh, I'm going to buy an army. I'm going to buy an air force. Mm-hmm. I'm going to buy... Um, some diplomacy or tokens. flags. Some, yeah, some flags which I can use to influence people yep. or do other things. And you're collating all that stuff and I just throw it in a pot. And you're doing all the same thing, throw it in a pot. Yep. And everyone's doing that. And then you mix it all up and you're like, what's going to happen? Cause well, and there's it's so interesting because there's units in there. Mm-hmm. There's... Activation, ch- there. I mean, it's just there's it's such a hodgepodge. Everything is in there, so I can like build all the things that I need, and I can control one of those things. Mm-hmm. You can keep one chit out that you're gonna do with the everything else gets thrown. Everything in. else is in there, so you're like, yeah, I'm gonna build a couple navies because that's so that navy, need those, that navy you like, built may you not have come out. No idea and till late in the round. And sometimes you're like, oh, holy crap, I desperately need this because things have gone yeah. so badly. Or you're like. The situation has totally changed, mm-hmm. and this comes out, and you're like, "Good mm. gracious, look what else I can do!" Yeah, right, right. That I never thought in t- imaginable. There's just so much unknown as the game unfolds, and you have to play with the cards that you have yeah. dealt yourself into this pot, but come out and maybe not necessarily in a way that you had. Yeah, very fascinating. And it just is a fascinating game, and it it just works. It works to create an unscripted chaotic 
game that can turn out so different than yeah. his, history. And I, I think it's fascinating. It's, I, I really feel like we've only scratched the surface of this one. It, I, we need to literally just take an entire weekend and play. There's so many iterations of the yeah. game in the box you can play. You know, Something as small as like um, Germans against Russians. You can mm-hmm. play yep. just that if you want to. Or you can play the full European theater. Or you can or play full both Pacific. maps together. Yep, that, or both just together. One, yep. or just the, I mean, there's so much in here you can tailor to however you want it. And there's just a and it ton looks, of events. Oh, it's just so good. And it looks great. Yeah, you know, it, it has it, a great style. Yeah, uh, it uses thing. cubes and counters that, that are different than normal counters. It just looks great. The map looks so, yeah, great. This is my number one war game from 2018. Cataclysm, a second yeah. world war. Uh, not just a war game, but it's economics and Everything. politics and diplomacy, which I love all that extra stuff we, in the game. When we played it, I remember talking about it because you love Unconditional Surrender I a do, lot. I do, a lot. And they share, while not remotely the same, no. they share some of those concepts. Yeah. And I I was not surprised that you liked this as much as you yeah. did. And I liked it just as much. I just liked one other game a little more. What was that game? Well, my number one is, and I'm not embarrassed to say this. Mark, I'm not embarrassed. Armageddon War. We already talked about it. I don't know what else to say. I, I loved this game. Very similar to you. I don't know that I have a, had a huge huge interest in it, but when we got it, we played it. We played multiple scenarios. We played a couple scenarios where I felt bad about being the bad guys. You know, there was one that I remember, and, and it was a weird scenario where I was like Hezbollah, and I was running away, just trying to escort a leader off the map, and it just felt <laughs> it felt odd. Um, it's very, yes, because it's got some real names and places. Right, right, right. So it, I don't know, I just think it's very cool. I think it's got a lot of neat elements. I think it's fun. I had a good time playing this game. I, and I cannot t- speak enough. This is one of the best new systems. Yep. And I'm like, please put this in. And, and I please love n- the new system. Stuff we just played the Battle of Kursk. Yes. Um, different, different designer, but still flying pig games. And what was my comment to you about... That system is awesome too, but I'm like, man, use the continual activation thing, and yes. I love the trapezoidal. I call them trapezoidal, but I love the flag markers. There were just so many great things that came out in this system. I want to see another system use this, another game use this system. It, it, truly, it is it is that good. Yeah, it's it very is, good. My expectations are quite low. Yep, but it. If they had been high, it would have exceeded all expectations by a long way. I think so. It's. Yeah, I, I was so surprised. Yeah, and the the, the system is such a pleasure to play. Yeah, it's it just, really it's is. fun. And, and you know, when it all boils down to it, we play these games for many reasons: educational, uh, recreating history, trying to change history or change the outcome. But the reality is, I think we all play these for fun. Yeah, we, we all play these war games to have an a, an interesting experience. And that's why this one was was number one for me. I enjoyed it that much. Yeah, it was it was a blast yeah. to play. Yeah, and a breath of it was really a breath of fresh air for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, well done, well done. Yeah, I remember reading the rules for this, and I was like, <laughs> it, it was all new stuff. Yep. I was reading the rules, and be like, hmm, what is happening? I don't. I had to read like the dice system a lot because there's this whole yeah. colored dice, and you start with black ones. You they go might go to, to red ones if they're really good, yeah. or if if you're in a really cramped situation, they might green. go to green, which suck. Yeah. And so there's this whole scaling system of how many dice do I roll, and how many of them are good and bad, yeah. what do I roll, and then it's a whole new activation system, and that, that the kind of the degrading quality of, of your situation as well yeah. was so much new stuff. I, I was like, okay, the rules, well, I, uh, what, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing, but when we set it up and I actually just, just played it, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Well, like I said, I I talked to Mark about it. Greg answered some questions about it. I didn't understand how cool it was until we actually played it. Yeah. So this is a game I think you got to play to really fully appreciate. And you get a bunch. There's, I mean, huge boards. There are tons tons of scenarios, lots of counters, big, beautiful counters. So great game. Well done. Well done. Now, we have a couple of honorable mentions. We can't forget those. Yes. We're not going to go over them individually necessarily or delve a lot into them. What are your honorable mentions? Or did you want to go into them deep? 
I'll, we won't go too deep. We won't yeah. go deep. So, for my honorable mentions, I have... This is just the, the expansion, but... Um, the centenary edition of The Great War from PSC Games is... Fine. It's World War One Command and Colors, right? Yeah. It's effectively what it is, but it's got little figurines. So great. They're pre-cut off their sprues. Yeah. It's they're just, so tiny. It's like Memoir 44, World yeah. War One. It's just really neat rules. Yeah. Cool little special units. And you get tons of guys on the board and lineups. Really yep. Cool. So we had a blast that with one. that one. That's really fun. So no number on that, just that's one yeah, of your two or three honorable mentions. Gallipoli 1915. And I, yep, I thought about adding that one. Um, this is a really big game and a really complex game, a very really deep, rich game. I almost feel like it's too deep, too complex. It may be. Yeah. But for, I, for me, maybe. That's my this statement. Is, this, is an, this is like a learning exercise for me, I think. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from it, and it's fascinating to see what they're trying to do with... with the age and the system of the weapons. Yeah. So. Well, and, and I always ask myself, did I have fun playing it? And yeah, the answer is yeah. I did. It just was a lot. Yeah, this is a big game. Um, yeah. Not for the faint of heart. Nope. And then the last one. Ooh, this is one that very, very nearly made yeah. my list. Yeah, 1918, great, so. Brother Against Brother. This is from um, Linden Lake Games. And this is um, it's the Finnish Civil War. This mm -hmm. is a Finnish company. It was on Kickstarter. It just came out. It's a CVG, we love those, and it's a really tight, um, you have stacks of units, but there's point-to-point -point movement. Rail movement, lots this of rail a, movement. Yeah, this was a great learning opportunity for me, a fun CVG, plays in one easy sitting. Well, and, and I really like, I agree with you, this is a great game. Uh, the CDG system is really cool. Those events are just brutal. Mm -hmm. I remember some of the events were just so bad. But they were fun. They were... I really enjoyed that game. And the game plays over the course of like four or five months. And as the months yeah. go on, you add historical cards, cards yeah. in. So it's a really neat game. Well done. Um, this well was done very game. enjoyable. And, and we played that on a... I think we played it on a Sunday. And we played it in about two hours. And I yeah. remember thinking, that was a really fun, fast game. So if you're looking for a good CDG, this is a good one. Yeah, very interesting piece of history yeah. to learn about too. So, so uh, those are my honorable mentions. Yep. What so are yours? My honorable mentions. I need Pacific Victory. <laughs> okay. Sorry. This one. So this is one of them. Pacific, Pacific Victory. We already talked about this, but I, I really enjoyed this game. Had a lot of fun with it. Learned some things about the Chinese troops and, and their setup. Just enjoyed it. Another good Pacific theater war game. And a block war game. I loved it. Really, really liked it. Night Fighter Ace. I didn't put this on my list, Greg, not because I don't like it. We have played a lot uh, of games this year. I just need to give this game more time. You've played... I've played many, a bunch. 30 or 40 missions, maybe. More than that. I've played <laughs> way, way less than that. I just... I need to put more time into it. But this is a great game. There's no doubt this is a fun game. I actually have a copy of it. So... Yes. Um, one that one that I really enjoyed, and then there's one game that I just absolutely had a blast with. You've not played this. No. This is a solo game from Tiny Battle Publishing, Attack of the Fifty Foot Colossi, or Colossi, however you want to say it. I would say Colossi. Colossi, but it's a it's a fun sci-fi war game designed by Herman Lutman, who designed At Any Cost. So it's really interesting that Herm can design this. And then designed that. That was so amazing. The very much opposite ends of the spectrum. But this is amazing. I think I played this three or four times in January, and I just really liked it. I have not played it since, but it's staying in my collection because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it that much. So one of my honorable mentions. So there's there's our thoughts or take on 2018 games. And there's an ungodly amount of games that we... What are, what are some games you're embarrassed that we didn't get to play? Um, the games that I'm like very much aware that we didn't play was Radetzky's March. Which was a Kickstarter. Yeah, that was one I really wanted to play. And the Dark Sands we haven't got to yet. And, and we actually were going to try to play that this weekend before doing this video. And it just didn't work out. I, I, we're, we'll get that played. That is a fantastic Those are two big looking ones game. That stick out in my mind. I, I also have uh, Corsair Leader. From Dan Versen Games that I have pottered around with. I've 
punched and, and organized, but I, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't played that one. And then Dark Sands is just, it's a crime that I haven't played that. Can't play them all. I, I we'll know. get there eventually. We'll get there, but all in all, a very good year. I enjoyed a lot of the games. I think it's now time to kind of move on, and, and get, we have some new 2019 games that we need to get into, and we have a shelf of shame that we have to knock out. Yes, Go so, check out that Shelf of Shame video if you haven't already, because yeah, we'll just crucify ourselves and the, yeah. the very famous games we haven't played yet. But we're putting pressure on ourselves to try and get those games to the table. To hold ourselves accountable. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, that's the wording we used. So that was our kind of top 10 of 2018. A fantastic bumper year for war games, I think. Yeah. There were some very great new titles. A lot of reprints that of very good games that were put out, especially towards the end of the year. Um, looking forward to 2019, but yeah. what were your favorite games of 2018? What, and how would you rank them? I want you to write all that in the comments. Yeah. Uh, what your best games were. What were games that we didn't touch on that we should look at? Um, some of them we may have played, but just didn't make the list. But what, what, we want to hear about all that kind of stuff as well. So... That was Top 10 of 2018. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayers8.com. And I'm Grant.